Um, most of us have grown up in the church. We know all the Bible verses. We've probably known all the Bible stories before our ABCs. At least I did, because I actually did speak English first. I'm just kidding. They always make fun of me for that. Anyways, anyways, um, today I want to talk about kind of living, growing up in the Christian, well, in the Christian church, um, and realizing that I didn't even know what being in love with Christ actually meant. Um, so I'll start off my story. Um, again, I grew up in the church. My dad and my mom were a part of a pastoral lead for Nepali church. Um, and they also had a small group. They had many, and they were also leads of that. So I was like kind of a pastor's kid, but I wasn't actually. Like I wasn't, you know, at a church or whatever, staying there until 5 p.m. Um, but basically it was perfect cookie cutter Christian family, okay, and I always had a pose for the pictures, and it was like, you have to be the perfect Christian girl, and you guys, you guys get the gist of it, because I, I, I don't know, um, but anyways, there was like a moment in my life where I was like, this, this can't be Christianity, this can't be what's all of this religion, like, I don't actually want to do it anymore, um, and so I kind of walked away from my faith, um, and then I ended up, um, freshman year, cutting some distractions out of my life, um, and I realized that there is such a difference in knowing who God is, in knowing what living a Christian life is, and the difference between acting it out and actually falling in love with Jesus. Um, so I'm going to have you guys all close your eyes real quick, um, and I'm going to do a little survey, okay? Um, so everyone close your eyes, and be so honest here, okay? Be so, so honest. Raise your hand if you sometimes feel like God is just a God who tells you what to do. And you just feel like there are rules that you have to follow. Okay, you guys can put your hands down. You guys can close your eyes. Um, so that was a major thing in my life. Um, again, I had told you that I felt like my family always had to be perfect for the perfect Christian family picture. Um, and then one thing was I felt like I had to be perfect all the time for Christianity. It felt like all of these rules... And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore, right? So walking away from that again. But as I was um, learning about the fact that Jesus wanted me, then I realized that it's actually a lot simple. It's a lot simpler than that. He's not asking me to be perfect. He's not asking me to have done all the right things before I come to him in worship. He's not asking me. You can open your eyes, by the way. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, He's not asking me to do all of these things in order to be his daughter, because I simply am. Um, so I'm going to start off with probably, like, the best Bible stories, Mary and Martha, okay? Love them. They're the great. They're the best. Um, so, you know, Jesus goes over to the house. Martha's cooking up a storm, probably cleaning. Um, and Mary simply sits at his feet. And Martha goes, you need to tell her to help me, okay? And Jesus goes, and this is in Luke 10, by the way, if you guys want to know. Um, he goes, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about so many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Um, and all he's asking of you, all he's asking of you is a yes. He's not asking you to be perfect. He's not asking you to be purified completely to come to his feet. He's, all he's asking is for you to say yes. Um, there's a parable in Matthew 22, uh, that Jesus says, and it's this king and his son is getting married. And he says, I'm going to throw a banquet for my wonderful, beautiful son. Okay. And so he does. And he invites all these great people and they just ignore his invitation. And well, this is a bit of a surprise, but he actually goes out and kills all of them. Okay. And he's like, you know what? I'm still going to have this banquet. I'm still going to have this banquet for my son. And he goes and tells his servant, you go and find whoever you want from the street and invite them. Um, and he says in Luke, I'm sorry, he says in Matthew 22, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Do you understand that so many Christians live their lifestyle of saying that they know and love God, but they do not act like it? They are not actually in love with Christ. Being in love with Christ is so much more than you think. Being in love with Christ is at every beaking moment you're thinking of him. 
every breath. Do you know, anatomically, your heart, it's crazy. Every beat, there's oxygen in that blood that is circulating throughout your body. Every single beat. You are so intricately made. And yet you sit here and complain. You guys can hate me for what I'm going to say, but I'm a senior, so I'm going to be gone in a few months. But, but this is embarrassing. The way that you say that you love Christ and you put one foot into the world and one in the Christian, it's embarrassing that we stand here in worship or sit down without actually giving our 100%. You say you love Christ, so act like it. There is a difference between knowing God, knowing his word, and living it out. If this is the generation that we want in the future, then I am embarrassed. Then I am embarrassed. I don't want this for you. He doesn't want this for you. Because he is inviting you into something so much deeper. You're the people that say no to his invitation. And so instead, he goes out and calls the rest. You guys don't understand how privileged you are to be coming to the Daniel Academy, to be equipped with people that genuinely want the best for you. In this atmosphere, this is such a thin place between heaven and earth. And I know that might be just out of your mind but it's crazy and you sit here and you don't even worship him you don't even love him like you say you do how are you loving Jesus throughout your life when someone asks you why should I become a Christian what do you say what do you say when someone says how do you love like Christ what do you say just being nice? Oh, thank you. Um, Jesus is so much more than that. When you begin to fall in love with who he is, you see him in everything. I wrote this in my testimony um, in Senior Foundations. You see Jesus through the smiles of people. You see Jesus in the trees. You see Jesus in nature. Don't you long for that? Don't you long for falling in love with Jesus that you see him everywhere? But we're so, we're stuck in this, we're stuck in this middle place, this middle ground. But where we come to worship, we sing the songs, we sit through service, and then we go home and what are we saying about our friends? What are we saying about the teacher that we don't like? Your voice is not that deep, and I know it. Um, but there is so much more, okay? Um, I actually did not want to go off like that, um, but I'm actually not going to apologize because sometimes you guys need the hard truth. Um, so I want to call you up for a prayer. This was actually a lot shorter than I wanted it to be. Um, but stand up if you want to love Jesus the way that he's asking you to. And everyone can close their eyes and, and st st like, you can have your hands open, invitation, whatever. Um, but I'm just going to pray real quick. Jesus, I pray for these students. Lord, I thank you that you have so much in store for them. Lord, I ask that you would show them who you are. Jesus, Lord, I ask that you would show them who you want them to be. That there is so much more to Christianity than just the rules than just the regulations, Father. Lord, I ask that you would show yourself through visions, through dreams. Father, we want to live a life of excellence. We want to live a life of full Christianity. We want to worship like David. We want to be at your feet like Mary. We want to walk in gratitude like Job. Father, I pray for every single student here. Lord, I ask that you would meet them in this place. Lord, I ask that you would visit them through dreams and visions and that you would encounter them. 
that you would stir that hunger, that a fire would be ignited. Jesus, we renounce the lie of lukewarm, of being lukewarm, Father. We cut that off. He says that he will cut off the branches for pruning. Lord, I ask that we would not be the branches that have been cut off. Amen.